what are the most important SEO tips for the current state of SEO? That's a question that a whole lot of people have, primarily because of the major changes Google has made, the Google Penguin and, and uh, Panda updates over the past couple of years. Particularly about a year ago is when the biggest change um, that I saw with my with my own websites um, happened, and that's when they changed the how they look at anchor text and they started um, wanting more natural anchor text and that's our first point right here which we'll get into um, and it is the most important in my opinion change that has happened there are several other things that you do have to take into account several other things that have changed but this is the primary one and if you do this wrong you're just going to ruin the SEO potential of your site so in this video I'm going to try to explain um, the most important aspects of SEO these days, what's going to hurt you and what's going to help you. All right, so as you can see here, natural anchor text and distribution, links from diverse trusted sites, on-page factors that are important, and frequent updates and regular promotion. So that's what we're going to go over that at the highest level in this video. So the first point is natural anchor text and distribution. Um, this, again, this is the most important change. So this is something that you definitely need to pay a lot of attention to. If you get this wrong, you're going to hurt the potential, the ranking potential of your site in Google. Um, you do not want to over-optimize. You want the anchor text distribution to be as natural looking as possible. And to do that, you need to have your brand and URL um, up there. I'm not going to get into percentages. Um, I'll probably throw a few out here and there just as suggestions, but the percentages, and if you look at different sites that rank um, out there, you're going to find varying percentages of, you know, brand saturation, URL saturation, <clears throat> keyword saturation, obscure, etc. Um, but for the most part, the brand and URL, different versions of the URL, should be the most used anchor text for your website. All right, so don't over optimize with your primary key with any keywords um, there should be more brand and URL anchors than anything else all right so that's number one make sure that happens and the URL you know www.mysite.com mysite.com HTTP colon slash slash www.mysite.com just different variations of your URL that's natural that's what happens and that's what they want to see all right, backlink relevance is important, so try to get as many backlinks um, from highly relevant sources as possible. Um, this isn't something that f in reason is going to hurt you, um, but the more relevant the backlinks are, the better, um, unless the, you know, the backlinks are just completely 100% irrelevant, um, you know, all the time. That's probably not a good thing, um, but backlink relevance, the more relevant, the better do not overuse the keywords and this is the primary thing right here um, you know previous to about a year or so ago I don't remember the exact date you could use you know your primary keywords 90% uh, of the time and you could rank for that keyword I mean that's how you did it you just got a whole lot of backlinks using whatever keywords you want to rank for and you could rank for just about any um, low to moderate competition keyword can't do it anymore don't do it anymore um, you will almost never rank for your keywords if you do that so your keyword your the keywords you want to rank for should be a low percentage um, less than 10 percent most of the time if you use EMDs and I'll go ahead and get into that here skip down to that EMDs can use the URL keyword more um, we have seen that and it, it just it's because it kind of ties into the brand so if you have a keyword as the EMD um, and the EMD is an exact match domain so um, you know dogtrainingtips.com is an EMD for dog training tips so if you were trying to rank for dog training tips and you owned dogtrainingtips.com um, you could get away with using dog training tips as your anchor text uh, a little more you know maybe may, maybe up to 10 percent or so and again there's no exact percentages um, I definitely would not want to go much higher than 10 percent even with an EMD um, but you can get away with that we have seen that um, that is true uh, but do not overuse your keywords use uh, you know whatever the keywords are that you want to rank for definitely get them in there um, but it should be a single digit percentage um, and your brand and URL needs to be much higher the percentage 
Use variations of your keywords and don't be afraid of the low search volume keywords. You know, even if the Google Planner keyword tool says uh, that your keyword, you know, that, that the keywords only have, you know, 50 monthly searches, you can rank for, you know, five or ten different keywords on one page just by including them in the page and, and, and it being relevant to the keyword. So use different variations, um, you know, and getting getting just a couple, just a handful of, of backlinks using that, um, those low search volume phrases in there. And that's going to associate the, a whole range of keywords with that page or that the root of that website. So use variations. Um, and then your primary keywords, which are your keywords usually your keywords with the highest search volume the hardest ones to rank for use those in the anchor text from your most powerful backlinks so the highest quality backlinks that you can get um, are usually going to be a small number um, so for those small number of backlinks which are more powerful those are the ones you want to use your your primary keywords in your most competitive keywords the hardest ones that are going to be ranked for uh, to, to get ranks for rankings for so use your keywords in those you know powerful backlinks if you have high high PR backlinks whatever you have whatever wherever they're coming from um, use it in those that way you know that primary keyword is still only used a couple times but the couple times that it is used um, it's it's getting a lot of authority going through that um, which associates it with that and which will help you rank for that all right, so links from diverse trusted sites. Stay away from low quality sites. Now, it's very important to understand what a low quality sites site is. And this is one of the things that the disinformation out there, um, the people who are doing these old tactics that don't work anymore, um, and then telling everyone, well, it's all because of you know the low quality. It's all because of the social bookmarks and stuff. So they just equate social bookmarks, um, you know, article directories, etc., with low quality sites. And that is not the case. Um, there are a lot of low quality social bookmarking sites and article directory sites and web directory sites, you know, etc, etc, forum profiles, etc. There are low quality sites out there and you do want to stay away from them. But the a type of a site does not tell you the quality. Uh, there are all kinds of very high quality um, social bookmarking sites and article directory sites, you know, Easing Articles, uh, Reddit, um, stumble upon you know these these are sites that are high quality and there are a lot more than that um, those are just the t you know the top few off the top of my head but there are a lot of them out there and these help you you get ranked I mean you know sites um, that that get into these sites that get submitted to these sites um, you know that's a trust uh, a ranking signal for Google so get your sites into them um, be careful which ones they go into um, but get your sites into them. Don't be afraid um, to get backlinks from these manual, you know, these easy backlink sources. Just make sure they're not low quality backlinks. So how do you know, um, you know, which ones are low quality? The root PR is a good way to filter, but it is not the only way to filter. So if you just want to <clears throat> uh, not get too deep into it, um, you're going to get rid of some sites that could have been quality. Um, but it's go it's a pretty um, effective way to make sure that you're only submitting to good sites. Is just get rid of all backlink sources that do not have uh, PageRank, and that's Google Toolbar PageRank. It's not the most you know the most perfect um, picture of authority, but in general, if Google has a problem with a site, it's not going to have any PageRank. It's not going to give it any Toolbar PageRank. So if you're only submitting to sites that have a root PageRank of at least one, um, then for the most part you're going to stay away from those low quality sites that will hurt you um, and the root PR is the home page so um, you know reddit.com is the root <clears throat> see what the the page rank of that is it's high um, if you know you, you get your list of you know whatever the sites you want to submit to and then you just filter out all of them that don't have page rank now there are other ways to look at that you know just going to the website seeing the popularity of it seeing the professionalism of it you know if it, is it just a plain basic thin site then okay you probably shouldn't submit to it um, you know does it have a whole lot of you know social media activity um, etc so those are things that it will tell you um, you know whether it's a legitimate site or not um, and obviously 
if you can tell that there's a whole lot of activity, if it gets a lot of traffic, you know, maybe there's comments on something, whatever, um, you know, th then that will be a good indicator that it's a good quality site that you should, you know, get a link from. Um, a lot of that is just, you know, the eye of the beholder. Um, you can get, you know, a deep analysis, look at the backlinks and, you know, and everything else. But for the most part, that's not really necessary. So uh, just looking at the root PR is a good way to do that. Easy backlink sources like article directories or social bookmarking sites are still val valuable, getting low to moderate computation keywords ranked. So we just talked about that. And then social signals are not a ranking signal. And that's a big misconception. A lot of people um, believe that they are a ranking signal. They are not. They are, uh, in many cases, related. Um, you know, if a site gets a lot of, gets high rankings, then it's probably going to have um, depending on the niche and the demographics and a few things, um, but a lot of times it will have a lot of social activity. Uh, but Google, Matt Cutts has come out a few times and just straight said that um, social signals are not a ranking are not a ranking signal in Google. He in the past there's been some confusion on it. He said that they they he kind of hinted towards they they were a ranking signal in the past a few years ago. Now they're saying they're not, and all indications um, go towards them not being a ranking signal. That doesn't mean that you should not be doing any social media. Social media can can very well help because they can um, invite natural backlinks. That happens a lot these days. So social media is a good thing. Facebook is good, Twitter, you know, whatever you're doing. Um, if you feel like you need to do it, then do it. Um, social media is a good thing. Definitely can drive traffic, a lot of traffic, and can invite backlinks. So social media is a good thing to do because you can get those natural backlinks from it. But don't be, you know, don't spend your SEO budget on trying to get social signals if they aren't good, um, you know, quality uh, social signal, you know, quality, uh, you know, where you're going to actually get traffic and, um, you know, have the potential to getting natural backlinks. All right. So on-page factors are still important. They're very important. There's a few things um, that are very important. So targeting the keywords, uh, targeted keywords should appear in the content and the primary keywords should appear in the title. Um, so you want to tar try to target various phrases, and that's the second point here, target various phrases per page. Um, don't just target one keyword on each page. You want to target one primary keyword, absolutely, and that primary keyword should be in the title. And that should be a keyword that you know, gets a decent amount of monthly searches. You know, it all depends on what, you know, your plan is, what you're targeting, etc. Just a kind of a general rule of thumb. Um, I try to go somewhere in the 800 plus uh, monthly searches range per internal page. Um, but that's just kind of a random, random number. Um, and that should be your in your title. So you want that to be in your title tag, preferably in the front of the title. And then you want your brand in there. You want it to be natural, not just the keyword. Um, you want to have uh, a little bit more in there to entice the user to click and just for a more natural appearance. And then you want to get some variations of that, that primary keyword on the page. So you can rank for, you know, you could be ranking for five or ten different variations of that phrase that get a smaller number of search uh, searches per month. Uh, but result in you know them piling up and equaling uh, a decent amount of searches. So you want to do that and make sure that you get those keywords on the page. So if you want to rank for red widgets and the word or the phrase red widgets doesn't even appear on your page, um, that's going to be much harder to get that page to rank for red widgets. So make sure the keywords that you want to rank for, the primary and the variations, appear on the page. Um, in the actual content of the page. Don't overdo it. Make sure it, it sounds natural. To, you know, you definitely don't want to have, you know, every other word with a keyword. Um, <clears throat> per 500 words, my general rule of thumb is one or two instances of each keyword, per keyword. Um, so don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Uh, but make sure the keywords are on there. Don't over optimize. Don't have you know if you're targeting red widgets, you don't want to have you know the the subheading of a, of your uh, you know in your sidebar red widgets, and then you know you have the word red widgets five times in your article, and then you have red widgets in the title of the you know of the article, and then you have red widgets in the title of the page, 
and then you have red widgets in the alt tag of the of the images you know so you don't want to over optimize it's natural to have variations of a keyword so if you're if this page is about red widgets it's natural to have and red widgets might not be the best uh, best example let's say uh, dog treats if dog treats is the pay is what you're targeting on the page then it's natural to have puppy treats um, you know natural puppy treats um, affordable puppy you know just uh, affordable um, puppy snacks you know different variations of that keyword is natural so you don't want to eliminate all the variations and target only one specific keyword because that is artificial looking um, and in many cases that will hurt you so use variations of your keywords on your pages not only is it going to keep your page from being seen as artificial to Google but it's going to help you to rank for these different variations of the keywords and uh, I, I always like to do a little keyword research for those phrases and get and try to get phrases that actually have a little bit of search volume um, so you know if I am going to rank for these phrases I'm at least going to get a little bit of, of search volume from that and again that can add up the definition of quality content depends on the judge of it so Google cannot and does not manually view every page on the internet and that's another uh, big thing that a lot of people don't understand they think that Google you know they have manual reviewers so you know if, if my articles aren't just awesome then <clears throat> uh, you know they're never gonna rank that's not true there's <laughs> there are millions of pages out there on the internet and Google absolutely does not and cannot review every single one of them with a human in most cases your content is never going to be seen by a Google reviewer um, that doesn't mean just go out and throw you know slop content out there the better your quant your content is the quality of it you know the better the, the better chances you're going to have of natural backlinks coming in um, and the better uh, that the content is going to convert into whatever you want it to convert into an ad click or whatever um, so quality content does matter um, it is it is important it is good but don't think that you can't get a page ranked unless you have you know <clears throat> you know handwritten perfect content that's going to just blow someone's mind you know you you can have content out there the content doesn't even have to be 100 percent unique you want your content to be unique um, you don't want it to be copied definitely if your page if your site's full of copied content um, if it's completely copied you're not going to rank at all most likely um, but you can have you know a certain percentage of your articles can be um, not unique I mean it's just a fact we have sites out there ranking just with article builder content um, which is mostly unique content but it's not 100 percent unique content we have sites ranked on the front page of Google uh, with 100 percent content from that so uh, content does not have to be you know 100 percent mind-blowing awesome content like Google wants you to believe it has to be is it good to have you know mind-blowing awesome viral content absolutely but you know let's face it you can't come up with content like that every day um, so just the, the, this point is really just more of a you know don't worry too much about it try to get good content out there as much as possible um, but if you can't you know on the, in this particular niche or whatever then don't worry about that you can still get a page ranked uh, frequent updates and regular promotion update every week or so with new content that's my general rule of thumb um, and again that's kind of a broad suggestion you know there are sites that rank that haven't been updated for months um, it is it does look like it's it's looked at much more these days that that a page um, that a site needs to be updated um, fairly regularly to hold a ranking especially if it's a uh, if it's a good keyword you know a keyword with a lot of search volume with a lot of competition so it is a sign of legitimacy but another thing is you know the more content you have the more potential rankings you have so you want to keep producing content the more content you have the more rankings um, you know if you have 10 articles of similar uh, quality um, and similar ranking potential then you know and and this, your competitor has 10,000 he's going to get massive traffic compared to what you're going to get so the more articles you can get out there the better um, not only for Google but just for 
or not only uh, to appease their algorithm, you know, and to the overall rankings of your site, but also to uh, collect more ranking potential over time. And then continue to obtain backlinks each month. Uh, it shows gradual growth of the site. Um, can you go without building backlinks for you know a month or two and still obtain rankings? Sure, you can. Uh, but if you completely quit after building links for a while, your rankings are, uh, in most cases, going to go down. And again, that depends on the niche, um, you know, the the competition. It depends on a few things. Um, can can you you know continue to rank for a long period of time without it? Yes, um, in many cases you will not though. So it is important to continue uh, to build backlinks over time. Um, it shows gradual growth and it's just a good thing. I mean you want to obtain those rankings and continue to obtain more rankings. Many backlinks followed by none is a sign of artificial growth. In, in some cases, uh, in, in many cases, not in all cases, yes, a viral piece of content um, can do that, and that's completely natural. Um, but in most cases, it's a sign of artificial growth. So you just want to have a gradual growth. Um, if you want to rank, why would you stop? You know, like I said, if you want to obtain more and more rankings and more and more traffic, um, why would you stop doing it? So it's it's a good idea to continue to build backlinks and content over time um, for your websites. And that's it. Those are the primary things to look at uh, in this day and age in regards to SEO. Don't use those old techniques without modifying what needs to be modified. This is what is working for us. This is what is working for a whole lot of other people. It's what's working for our clients. We have a, a whole lot of people um, using these techniques, doing it exactly this way to obtain top rankings. Uh, so that's it. This video is courtesy of Rank Crew, where you can get quality, manually built backlinks at very affordable prices. You can visit us at rankcrew.com today to get started. Thanks.